Let's combine five SVG uploads into just one right now. Hey there, this is Elena with Black Sheep 303 Creative. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you're not new. <laughs> so today I'm going to talk about combining individual SVGs uh, into one larger SVG. So I've got a bunch of individual flower files here that you hopefully can see. And let's say I wanted to make a wreath or something out of this in, oh, like Cricut Design Space. And to do that, you need to upload your files uh, and then, you know, work on making the wreath out of them. Well, given that these are all single flowers, I'm going to have to upload each one of these as an individual upload. And that could take a long time. And you may have also been aware that recently Cricut threatened <laughs> to limit the number of uploads that it would allow uh, non Cricut access members to do into Cricut Design Space per month. They have since walked that back, but um, it sounds like in 2022 they may change that. So I thought this could be helpful in case you want to know how to combine, say, like five of these into one SVG. So that would only be one upload as opposed to five individual uploads. So that's what we're going to do today. And we're going to do that in a program called Inkscape. If you have never heard of Inkscape, it is an open source vector design program, kind of like um, Adobe Illustrator or the Silhouette Studio editions that are beyond the basic version. But Inkscape is free. It is the main program that I use to design SVGs. Now it can be a bit glitchy, so you need to bear that in mind. But for me, that is a small price to pay for what is a free and very powerful design program. Now we're not going to get into designing or anything with it today. We're just going to use it for a very basic purpose, but it's free. So I think it's worth it for that alone. So to download it, you would go to the homepage here on inkscape.org and hit download now or you could go to download and do a current version. It's up to you. I think download now is the easiest. Just click on that and then it works on Linux, Windows and Mac systems. You can also uh, just do the archived versions. You would just click on that like I've got I'm on a Mac right now. So it'll automatically start the download and you just let it do its thing. Once the download is complete, like you see over here, you would click on that and then run the installer on your computer system to install the program. Did want to point out that there is this handy um, support Inkscape little button here where if you're feeling generous, you could, you know, give them some money for their amazing and free program, which I think is pretty awesome. So I'm going to skip ahead to and just open Inkscape and it looks like this. Now, uh, in all likelihood, when you open it, yours is not going to look like mine, especially the mat here. Usually when you first open it in the default mode, the mat is going to be letter size. So like eight and a half by 11 and the units are often in pixels or in the metric system. So if you're in the U S and you want to change the units, which I did, or if you just want to change your mat size, you would do that by going up to file document properties, stay on the page tab of the like menu that opens under display units. In all likelihood, you're going to have to change that from pixels or millimeters to inches. And then under page size, you're going to go to custom size. The first thing to do is go over to units here and usually that defaults to millimeters. So you have to change that to inches if that's what you want to do. And then just type in, you know, like 12 and 12.0 and 12.0 in, in the two boxes and like hit enter. And then your mat will change to the 12 by 12 one you see on my screen here. And then you can just close this box. The last thing you would do after you've changed all the document properties, if you want to have the program open like this every time would be to go up to file, save template, name it, you know, like 12 by 12 mat or something. And then make sure that you click the set as default template box. 
and then hit save. And so after that, it will always open with the settings you just entered as your default template. It's a little bit intimidating looking, especially if you are, don't use vector design programs that often, but don't worry about that right now because we're just using this to do a very simple import and save function and it's super easy. So I have already imported four of the images I want to combine into my new file with multiple images. So I'm going to just import the last one so you know how to do it. So what you would do is go to File, Import. You don't want to go to Open because Open is going to open an entirely new screen. And so don't do that. Just go to File, Import. It'll bring up your navigation of your computer and then just you know navigate to where you have the image you want to import. Click on it to select it and hit open. It's going to bring up this box, you know, just telling you sort of the default stuff on it. That's fine. Hit OK. And in comes your image. Now, obviously, it's kind of big, so I'm going to resize this down. I like to make sure that my aspect ratio lock is locked up here, and then I either grab the corner handle and just size it down by dragging. You can also change it to a specific width or a specific height by changing the numbers up here in these boxes. And so you would just repeat that process with all of the images that you want to put into one new file. Now before you save it, you do kind of want to get them all grouped nicely together towards the upper left of the mat because that is how it's going to save and will be imported on when you uh, import it into another program. So we're good to go. All we do is go up to File, Save As. You want to name it something up here. I called it Multi Flower Combo 1. I'll call it Multi Flower Combo 1B just to make it different. It's going to default to SVG, which is what I think you know you should save it as, and hit save. And that's it. Now I want to quickly point out that we are doing this with the files that were SVGs when I brought them in. So then it's very easy to save them out as a larger file with multiple images, all as SVGs. You can import JPEGs, PNG files into Inkscape and turn them into SVGs by tracing them, much like you do in other um, cutting machine design programs. But that's beyond the scope of this video for today. But that is it for all we need to do in Inkscape. So, now. so to show you how this could be helpful, I have opened Cricut Design Space. Now this is really the only program with cutting machines that wants you to upload images. Um, but there are web versions of like Brother Canvas that you might be using. If it's a desktop version, you won't need to upload, but you would need to open like files within those programs. And sometimes combining like all of these multiple small images into one file could be a time saver. It's definitely a time saver for Cricut Design Space. So as you can see, I've, down, I've uploaded all these individual um, images, but now let's go and upload the, the uh, multi-image SVG that I just made. So if we go to Multiflower Combo 1B and hit open, it's going to open it. As you see here, as a cut image, you can change the name, add tags, whatever you want to do, hit upload. It's going to show up on your recent uploads in the far, is the most recent one. And then I would just click on this. And so there I've got five flower images as opposed to having to, you know, click on each one of these and insert the images. I mean, I guess that's not that big a deal, but <laughs> it's really easy to just do one. And so if Cricut ever decides to do an upload limit, which, you know, we don't really know for sure, but the uh, recent statement from the CEO seems to indicate that that may happen in 2022. Um, this would be uh, at least a, a slight workaround for to go from, you know, five or six uploads into only one upload. So I would just, you know, click on that and then insert the images into my canvas 
and there they are they're good to go now I can ungroup them and I could you know delete the ones I don't want I mean you could do this with a ton of images if you wanted to in Inkscape I mean as many as you can fit on the mat in there and really even more than that so if it ever comes if there ever comes a day where there is a limit um, on uploads you could even combine a whole bunch of different uh, images you plan to use for different projects upload them as one upload and then you just delete out the ones you don't need for each project save the project as its individual name project name go back to that upload you know which will always be here and just up use it again as in a new project and then do the same thing so potentially helpful and I also think it's kind of nice to have everything combined in one in any of the design softwares because it just makes it easier if you're planning on like creating say a wreath or a bouquet out of all these flower images it's kind of nice and quicker to have them all as one file rather than having them in and going in and you know importing or merging every single individual image into one so i hope that's helpful and that you got something out of the video if you did i would truly appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up leave me a comment and consider subscribing to my channel here are a couple more videos you may be interested in thank you so much have a great day